Hi and welcome back to the next video. This time we are looking at our Angular Material SiteNav implementation. Um, the SiteNav is basically expandable and collapsible. The project that we are using here, or the implementation, is um, our um, Angular Material SiteNav project from one or two years ago. So it's the same repository, just I updated like the code, the Angular version, added some comments and so on. So we are using this. Now let's have a short look at the table of content, what's going to come. So like before, I already told you what this project is about and what we are doing. Now we have a look at the outcome of the project. So we have a short look at the running project so that you know um, what we are looking at or what we are building. And then second, we look into our Angular code. So we go through our code structure, we go through the code and like we start looking at the code structure and then we go from the top level to the bottom level through the code. So let's first have a look at our project outcome. So here you can see we have our running project. So I just sit here and reserve to run the project and then we can go into our browser and we can see here on the left, we have our SiteNav. Here we have our SiteNav content on the right. So everything here is our SiteNav content. At the top, we have our Angular Material Toolbar where we have here displayed hello everyone. So you can see it, it's slightly grayer than um, the bottom here. So the right is basically is our net site nav content here and our left is our angular material site nav. So, and you can see it here. I can either collapse it or expand it. And here we have like a CSS rotation for this icon. And if you click here, for example, on the dashboard, then you have here the dashboard route and then into our router outlet, we render the dashboard route or the dashboard component. For info, we have our info component rendered inside here and for user, our user component. So now let's have a deeper look into our code base. Here you can see in our package JSON, we have dependencies for Angular 13 and probably if um, Angular 14 or 15 comes out and something changes, I will update the repository and also make like a new video about it. And first, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see more. Um, and now let's go through the code. So it's like a basic Angular repository and you can see everything is happening here in our source folder. Um, so nothing added here and everything goes in our app. So at the top, we have our routing module and here we are lazy loading our dashboard module to so our base path is loading the dashboard module or lazy loading it um, and this is just like a redirect and you can see it here then our dashboard module gets rendered inside our router outlet here um, and nothing else here really happens so also here you yeah no special uh, imports and then yeah like nearly everything happens in our dashboard module so you can see it here we are having like declarations for the sitemap wrapper component, dashboard component, info and user component. And uh, just um, to make sure we don't really have to look into the dashboard info and user component because you can see it here and um, they are just there to display um, that the routing when you click um, in the um, sitemap or on a button or on, on a list item and um, that the routing works. So you can see it here just dashboard works and nothing else really here. Um, also in the info component, nothing else really here. So we could also remove like, for example, this here, the engine init constructor and so on. But so we don't really have to look inside it. Um, nearly all is happening in our site map wrapper component. So um, these are our declarations. And then for the imports, we have our common module from Angular. We have our dashboard routing module where we will look later or, or next into it um, so that we have all our routes and our components. Um, then we have imported some Angular material modules. So our SiteNav module, of course, our net icon module, because we are using here some icons on the left. You can see it here. Then we have our list module. This is because our SiteNav, the items here are a list. And then we have our toolbar module from Angular material. This is here at the top to use is used as a toolbar. So now we can go into our dashboard routing module. Here you can see we have um, our base 
path is again we have empty so this is our slide nav wrapper component and this basically acts like a shell um, where our active route or the active component or, or child component in this case here so for example if we have a slash dashboard then we render the dashboard component inside our site nav wrapper component so this here into this um, and then for this to be working we need in our site nav wrapper component a router outlet to tell the router where to render the children inside it so you can see it in our site nav wrapper component here on the left we always have our site nav that is always um, like the same and then on the right we have our site nav content where we first have our toolbar and then we have our router outlet where we have the content so there we render either the dashboard the info or the user uh, route or component inside it like you see here when we click dashboard then we are on the dashboard route and we render the dashboard component inside the router outlet from the complete wrapper component for info the same or for user the same and so on So let's go back to our routing module. So you can see it here now. We have our component site nav wrapper component and the children are dashboard info and user. And this is just a redirect. And then we can go to our components. Like you, like I said, dashboard info and user we can like completely ignore. And in our site nav wrapper component, you can see we only have one value. This is the X is expanded Boolean. Um, so this is initially set to false. So always if you like refresh the page with an F5 or something, then you can see it's initialized with false. So it's not expanded by default. By default, it's not expanded. Um, so it's set to false. Um, and now we can look into our template, how this works. So we have here our Met sitenav container with the directive auto size. So you can always have a look in the sitenav the API reference. Um, so we have here some directives. For example, um, that I'm using is, let's search for it, auto size here. And this just sa says whether to automatically resize the container whenever the size of any of its drawers changes. So you can see it here, that for example, if we change this here, that the user is not being still here inside it or, or beneath it, but it gets a new calculated. So it's getting resized. Um, then we have our mode set to side and we opened to our is expanded Boolean value. So this is like the initial value if it's opened or not. And the mode is side. So you can also look here from mode, let's find it here, mode of the draw, one of push, or side, over, so whatever you want it to be. And the same goes for the open, so this just needs a boolean value, and this is our value from here. <clears throat> and here now you can see in our angular material side nav, we have our Angular material nav list, and here we have some items. So each item is here, another item, and another item. And the first item that we are having um, is our Chevron button here, whether to um, yeah, make it expanded or not. So you can see it here. If we click on it, then we have like a click event. And then it sets the is expanded value here to the opposite. So when, if it's true, then it's setting it to false. If it, this value is false, then it's setting it to true and so on. So like you see, you can just click on it here and it's being set to false or true. And then we just have like the opposite. Um, then we have here our angular material icon, which is a net list icon. You can also look this up inside the API reference from Angular Material. We have a class Chevron button and an ng class rotated if is expanded is true. And this is just the name of the icon. Now we can go um, to our um, CSS. You can see it here. We have 
set to our MET sitenav container a height of 100% and our material sitenav, nothing really has or doesn't really have anything, but our nav list has a margin depth with 8 pixels. This is because um, you can see it here if I remove it. Now it's um, refreshing, one second. But then it's getting like stuck directly um, to each other and this doesn't look really nice. So I set it to 8 pixels. So you can see it here now when this is like a little bit too close for my eyes. So let's back make it 8 pixels. And then we have our two well, let's first look where we are using it, the menu item. So the menu item we are always using um, with a text. So we look later at it. And then what we're using here is the Chaplin button. So here we have like also a transition um, and a transform. So this goes for 300 milliseconds, ease in out. And we rotate it um, to zero degrees. And if we have the rotated class applied, then we rotate it by 180 degrees. So you can see it here. We apply with ng class, we apply the class rotated to it. If the is expanded, is set to true. So you can see it here. Now it's set to true, and then we apply the rotated class, and then now we remove it, and we apply it, and we remove it. And so um, this is how the little CSS animation makes it maybe a little more um, good looking for the eye. And then we have our next list items, and they are like all three basically the same, um, just having another route. Um, so you can see it here each uh, list item is having a router link. Um, the first is having one for dashboard, the second is one for info, and the third is for having one for user. And this, these are here the dashboard, info, user route. Um, and then it has always an icon, so a map list icon. Here we don't need to rotate, rotate anything or do anything, so we just have our normal Angular material icon. Here for home, here for important devices, however it is called, and here for the supervisor account, so you can change this whatever you like. And then we have a simple span, uh, span element to um, display the name. So here it's dashboard for the dashboard route, here it's info and here it's user. So this is just this name here, dashboard info user. And you can see it here. Um, we are only displaying it um, if the is expanded value is true. So if it's false, we are not displaying it. Um, and we apply the class menu item that we just looked at to every um, list or, or every span element in our list item. And this is just the eight pixels margin left, so that we have here like a little bit more margin between the icon and the text or the span. Um, and this is already the end of the material nav list and the site nav here. And then we are just having like the met site nav content, where we are rendering the content for the current router path, e.g. for the slash dot, uh, e.g. for the slash dashboard or slash info. Um, we have here just our Angular Material toolbar at the top where we just say hello everyone and then beneath we have our router outlet and here we render um, the current route. So we can here say thank you the router. And then we are just closing the material sitemap container and that's basically it.